All right, so this might be a little long video, but I'm gonna show you here. Um, right now there's nothing in. It finished a print and the filament goes down in there. And uh, this part here, I'm gonna try to point, let's see. Uh, the part up top here, well, let me get something better. Uh, here we go, okay. So this part my screwdriver's touching is called the idler. And then down here are the gears, the grub screws that grip it and push it through the PTFE tube, I think it's what it's called, uh, through this tube, and then it goes into the selector. Uh, so the selector moves back and forth depending on which filament that you want loaded. So right now, we're gonna go ahead and load to nozzle, so it'll put it all the way down here. Don't mind the cat here, I got two cats in the house. It's hard to keep control of the fur everywhere. So loaded nozzle, uh, let's see, I think I got PETG in four, so we should be good there. So yeah, like I've got PLA right here and right here. Uh, the, the other three are PETG. It just depends on what I'm printing. Um, this is the most recent print, which I need to touch up because for some reason it, it marked there on the end with some black, but I mean, this right here is pretty simple. You can click and walk away. You don't have to do any filament changes by hand. I could have done this one because I could have divided the layer and just printed black from, uh, from the letters up, but this thing takes care of it pretty well. I'm still waiting for it to heat up. But and then those tubes go down into the bottom of this buffer here. And uh, so basically any of the ex excess filament gets put in there instead of getting, you know, loose spool around like this. It keeps the spool kind of nice and tight. Um, as you can see, I don't really have any loose filament on these rolls. And they're all pretty, pretty good. <clears throat> All right, now it's going to ask which filament. Uh, we're going to load one, two, three, four. It will load filament four. So it moved over to the fourth hole. And it loaded it in. Should start spitting it out. So, say we want, well, we're done with that. Now, say we want to unload it. So, we'll unload filament. And then this is what it does between filament changes every time. I'm just making it do it manually. And it puts it back down in there. It stops it right there. So, right here on this sensor, once it comes out, it knows to park it down in there so it doesn't go out past the tube. Uh, one time I did have it do that, but I had a faulty sensor. There's a little ball on here that bounces up when it's loaded and uh, there was a piece of filament broke off inside there. It's pretty reliable once you get all the kinks worked out. Um, but like this piece here actually has a screw here and here that have springs in it so that it, it holds that filament down on the extruder gears up here uh, to feed it down through this tube. So hopefully that explains it. It's it's pretty nice setup. Um, the MMU itself, I think, is two ninety nine US dollars, and then this is the MK three S. It was, I think, shipped delivered was about eight hundred eight fifty something like that. Uh, it comes from the Czech Republic, so shipping is about eighty bucks. I think it's cheaper to just go ahead and get it all at once if you're wanting it, because um, I had to pay you know extra shipping on this. I think it's I think it's a little bit cheaper. It's not a whole lot cheaper, but I already went ahead and if you do end up getting a Prusa, get the smooth and a textured. Um, I've got both, and you know they're pretty good for different projects. Like this one here, this print here, I didn't need, you know, a pretty bottom. This is going to be glued onto something, so they're not even going to see the back end of it. So, hope that explains it all.